Okay, let's talk about the AEPA. And AEPA stands for Arizona Educator Proficiency Assessments. And the specific assessment we're going to be talking about in this video is elementary education. And uh, even more specifically, we're going to be talking about the subset two of this particular test, which is the math section. And here is the test code. It's NT and NES 103. So if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing to take this particular exam and striving to become an elementary uh, teacher in Arizona. So that's excellent. And again, what we're going to be doing here is looking at the math. We're going to be taking a look at a math practice problem that you should be able to handle pretty well if you're fully prepared for this particular AEPA uh, exam. So we'll get to that in a second. But first, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Taba Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed uh, many online math courses to include an AEPA Elementary Education Subset 2 uh, NTNES 103 test prep course. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. But all my courses... Um, you know, I really do a lot of research of what's on these particular teacher certification exams, and I try to build a nice custom curriculum. I don't want to give you too much math that you don't need for this particular assessment, but then obviously I want to make sure you are fully prepared and give you enough math. So it's kind of a balancing act, but you really have to know specifically what's on this exam. And I would characterize uh, the kind of math for this uh, that's on this exam as maybe high school level math. You know, you're going to need to know algebra and geometry and I can need to know advanced stuff pre-calculus and things like that that's good to know but that's not really going to be uh, the kind of level of math you're going to have to be dealing with for you know this elementary education certification now oftentimes uh, elementary education candidates think oh you know I really have to know place value decimals fractions you know all the stuff you're going to be teaching you know, it's second grade, third grade, etc. You need to know that as well, but you're going to have to know some high school level math. So if math is not your thing, you're going to have to kind of make it your thing, <laughs> at least up to the high school level math uh, to get through this exam with flying colors. So um, again, the key here is just to, you know, study, get ready, come up with a good plan of action. And uh, by virtue of you watching this video, you're clearly taking your uh, this exam, um, you know, and you know seriously, I mean, and that's obvious because you're striving to become a teacher. You just wouldn't be kind of like, oh, you know, willy nilly about it. But you're going to have to know again a lot of you know high school level math. So let's get to this particular problem. The way I like to do these little videos is tell you what the problem is, okay? And then I'm going to give a hint, and then I'm going to solve a problem. So if you don't want to hear the hint, I would encourage you to pause the video. But you should try to do this on your own. Uh, so let's go ahead and just talk about what the problem is. So here I got something uh, written. So this is a linear inequality. So we got an inequality going on here. Okay, what I'd like you to do is to graph this. Okay, so oftentimes with inequalities, uh, we like to graph the solutions. So hopefully that means something to you out there. And if you're like, okay, I know what he wants me to do. If you know how to do it, go into pause the video and do it. If you need a hint, I'm going to give you a hint right now. And if you don't want to hear the hint, obviously pause the video. And I would encourage you all out there to, you know, don't just listen to me, uh, you know, think about this problem before you, you know, grab on to this hint. Okay, so let's talk about a little bit of how to do this problem or what's going on. Okay, so with inequalities... Inequalities, we like to use graphs to express their solutions. So just a little quick review. If I gave you, uh, here's a real basic inequality, x is greater than 3. Okay, now here is another little pop quiz here. How do I graph this? Well, well, first of all, what's the solution to x is greater than 3? Well, this is all numbers that are greater than 3. So what are all numbers that are greater than 3? Well, it's a whole bunch of numbers, right? <laughs> 4, 5 you know, 100, uh, you know, uh, 10 to the 100th power, all the way up to infinity. So we're not going to write out the entire set of all the numbers that are greater than 3. Okay, so we'll generally, you know, with this inequality, we just, it is what it is, but we have an infinite amount 
of uh, solutions that you know satisfy this inequality. So what we like to do uh, with inequalities and in mathematics is uh, we like to express things as graphs like on a number line. So here uh, I could put here this is three this would be open circle and all numbers greater than three. So this inequality um, statement is the same thing or equivalent to this graph. Okay. So you need to know this as well. So if you don't understand this, you're going to have a difficult time with this over here. Okay, so um, when it comes to inequalities, there's always kind of a graphical representation of them. So you need to understand those graphical representations. So in this particular problem, okay, let me go ahead and erase this. What you need to do, all right, so here's your hints, is one, you're going to have to, you have to graph this, okay? So... Instead of thinking of this as an inequality, I want you to graph y equals 2x plus 5. Okay, so I'm going to give you a general uh, prescription of what to do here. So I want you to graph this. The second thing I need you to determine if the line is a solid line or a dotted line. Okay, now if you don't know what I'm talking about, well, I'll explain that here when I actually do the problem. So this is still in our hint section of the video <laughs> okay so you need to determine uh what's going on there and then third you need to determine what side you're going to shade uh, the line okay so it's gonna you're either going to shade above it or below it and the shading is uh, represents the solution region okay all right so this is your hint uh, and if you know how to do this, if you're like, okay, I know now, remember all this kind of stuff, then go ahead and do it. Now, if you're completely lost at this point, don't panic, okay? Just use this as feedback. And, you know, this video, this little problem is um, not designed to fully teach you this concept. This is just one problem. There's a lot of, you know, the other things you have to kind of, you know, know. But it's, again, uh, part of what you learned at the you know, basic high school level math. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to the problem. Let me uh, draw myself. Yeah, I could do a little bit better than that. I'm going to just make myself an, a little XY plane. All right, so here's XY, and I'm just going to be sketching this. So the first thing is I'm going to go ahead and graph Y equals 2X plus 5. Now, if you don't know how to graph lines, well, that's another issue okay so here you should at least know how to graph lines if you don't uh, more feedback for you okay you got a lot of work to do uh, to be ready for this particular exam all right so we go up to five one two three four five okay so that is going to be our y-intercept and then i have a slope of two so it's going to be up two over one okay so these two points here when i draw a line through it would be the graph of this line okay so you can see I replace this inequality with an equation symbol. So I have a, a linear equation. But now, I'll recall, so this is step one, is to graph this thing. But before I graph it, I need to know, am I going to graph, am I going to represent this graph with a solid line or a dotted line? Okay. And the answer to that question is a dotted line. Dotted lines are going to use for less than or greater than. Solid lines are less than uh, equal to. Okay, or greater than or equal to. So this is obviously a just a less than situation. So let's go ahead and use a dotted line here. So da, 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 da. And this is just a sketch. Nothing doesn't have to be totally perfect, you know. But don't be overly sloppy. You're gonna to want to be somewhat, uh, you know, accurate about it. So we'll put five here, like so. And so so far we have um, we have the graph. We know this is a dotted line because this is just less than not less than or equal to. Now I need to determine uh, where the solution region is, okay? So the way you do that is uh, pick a point. The easiest point to pick is zero, zero, okay? So zero, zero is underneath this line. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in zero, zero, and zero, zero is the origin, okay? This is x, y point, x is zero and y is zero. So let's plug it into this inequality, okay? So I have uh, y is less than 2x plus 5. We'll plug in a 0 for y. Now, just hold on with me. Uh, 
stay stay with me. If you don't know what I'm doing, I'll explain it in a second. And we're going to plug in a zero for X. Okay, zero, zero. We're going to plug that value in. And now I'm going to simplify this. So I get zero is less than, okay, two times zero is zero, then five. Okay, so this is the result of plugging in this value. Now notice zero, zero is a point underneath this line. So I plugged in its, its information into this inequality, and the result was zero is less than five. So I need to ask you, is that true or false? Is zero less than five? So obviously, you out there are probably like, of course it is. That is a true statement. Okay, zero is indeed less than five, meaning that this point underneath this line produced a true statement. So when you're dealing with uh, uh, learning inequalities like this, one side is going to be true, the other side is going to be false. The true side we shade, okay? This is the solution region, okay? The solution region, meaning that any coordinate in here, any x, y coordinate, would satisfy this inequality. Let's just pick one over here just to make sure we are, you know, good with. So one that's definitely underneath this would be, let's say, oh, x is, let's say, 4, 1, okay? Uh, this should be well underneath this line. So let's plug in 4, 1 into this inequality and see what we get. So we have y is less than 2x plus 5. So here, x is 4 and y is 1. So 1 is less than 2 times 4 plus 5. And you see that this is going to work out for us. Is 1 less than 2 times 4? That's 8 plus 5. So that will be 13, right? So 1 is less than 13. Is 1 less than 13? Obviously, it is. Okay, that is true. Okay, so... That's how this works. And if we picked a point way over here and plugged it into our inequality, it would produce a false situation. So this shaded region is called the solution region. So again, it's a graphical representation of the solutions to this inequality. Okay, the solutions to this inequality are coordinates anywhere in this solution region. Of course, it's infinite. It goes you know, all through this area. Now, we do have to um, understand what the dotted line indicates, okay? So the dotted line indicates that points that are actually on this line are not part of the solution set, are not part of the solution set. If this was a solid line, those points would be part of the solution set. Okay, so um, hopefully this brought you down memory lane. You're like, oh, yes, I kind of remember this stuff. If you completely forgot it, and if you didn't know, you know, if you didn't even know how to graph the line that well or whatnot, you know, you, you have some work to do. You know, again, this is a professional assessment. And just because you're going to be at the elementary level doesn't mean that, you know, you're going to be escaping high school level math. So, um, you know, prepare. The, just by virtue of you being, you know, uh, at the level of your education to be taking this exam, you've had this math before and you've passed this math before. You're just going to have to kind of get refocused, immerse yourself in it if math is your nemesis. But you can definitely do it, okay? The key is, uh, you know, take this exam, you know, uh, one time and then get beyond it, okay? And, uh, the you know, learning all this math is also going to pay dividends uh, because, you're likely going to continue your education. If you don't have a master's degree currently, you know, you probably are, if you stay uh, as a teacher, going to work on your master's and other courses. And, you know, math may sneak in there <laughs> from time to time. So the more the more math you know, the better off you're going to be in all respects. Okay, so let's go and wrap up this video. Again, I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video to my AEPA uh, math test prep course for the specific exam. So that's something you can check out. Um, if you're new to my YouTube channel, I've been on YouTube for several years at the time of this video, I think about 12 years actually, but I already have hundreds of videos on my channel that can help you out. Um, and I'm posting new stuff all the time. So hopefully you consider uh, subscribing. If you like the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave us some feedback. Uh, what's kind of your, you know, uh, career progression? Did you go to high school, college into teaching or did you move from one state to another? Maybe you were a teacher in, uh, California and now you're in, in, uh, Arizona. Maybe you are retired military or, 
you know, and you now you want to become a teacher and you need to get your teacher cert- teacher certification. There's all kinds of ways people uh, become teachers, and I think that's the great thing about um, being a teacher is that you can you can you know start later in life, but everybody still has to get through these professional certification exams, and you have to treat them with respect because they're not going to just be super easy exams. Unfortunately, there's a stereotype that. You know, everybody's, oh, anybody could become a teacher. Or if I was a teacher, I <laughs> hear this all the time. Everyone, all real teachers, they get a chuckle out of it. You hear the, oh, I can I can handle those kids. If I was a teacher, those kids would be doing exactly what I would, you know, they'll do everything and everyone have an A plus And, uh, you know, you guys get your summers off. Listen, you know, we all know that when you're actually teaching for a while, it is a challenging career. So we need strong teachers in there, but oftentimes, like anything in life, um, you know, uh, unless you've done the job, you're not gonna truly understand what it entails. But half of being a teacher is your professional knowledge and stuff like that. The other half is OJT, you know, just learning, developing experience. So latch onto those veteran teachers that can help you, you know, you know, really learn the art of teaching. It's just very much like being a, like an airplane pilot, an airline pilot, right? You can go to school and, you know, get qualified to fly a jet airliner, but until you've, you know, put in 10,000 hours flying, you're not going to be that experienced, professional, confident, you know, et cetera. So stick with teaching until you've developed that experience and you'll find your own way, okay? Anyways, I'd like to throw in this additional, um, you know, recommendations and whatnot, probably stuff you've already heard, but things that I definitely want to reiterate to you. But anyways, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on this particular AEPA exam. I know you can pass. Just work hard, be smart about it. Thank you for your time and have a great day.